Good morning. We want to welcome each of you to the December 11, 2012 meeting of the State of Tennessee Board of Funeral Directors and Embalmers meeting. Our first item is our roll call. I'm going to ask Miss Lisa Mosby if you would call her roll. Wayne Hinkle. Here. Tony Highsmith. Here. Clark McKinney. Here. W.T. Patterson. Here. Jane Gray Sal. Here. Robert Starkey. Here. Anita Taylor. Here. Mr. President, everybody, this is Gary Thank you. Uh, the next item is we need to adopt our agenda for our meeting today with the understanding that we may have to move the items around a little bit. Motion to uh, adopt the agenda as presented. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Hinkle to adopt our agenda as printed. Uh, seconded by, multiple seconds by Ms. Sal. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Um, we're going to let you review the minutes of the November 13 board meeting. Give you just a few minutes to review those. Chair will entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the November meeting. Approved. Have a motion to approve the minutes of November 13 by Ms. Sal. Second. Have a second by Mr. Starkey. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Um, I don't think we're hardly ready. Okay, all right, we'll take just a minute and then we'll move into our formal hearing that we've got scheduled for today.
Yeah. Okay, so we're going to jump around just a little bit on our agenda, and we have, I believe we have an individual here for license, if I can get everything up and running. Alright, we have a James Bryan Folsom here. If you would just come over come over here to the side on the witness stand and we'll we'll try to get you taken care of where you won't have to stay very much longer. President, Mr. Folsom is before you today for a question about 625311B and Rule 0660-2-0, sorry, Rule 0660-2-0.03. He is an out outcome of reciprocity. Now, we do not have all the information that we need yet. We're still waiting on official certification from Georgia. That is uh, supposed to be on its way. But the main thing that uh, we want to get in for the board for today is for a decision and a determination regarding his uh, art score on his national board. And that score was? 74.8. He has been a licensed film director for a period of years. He can, he can give you that information. And the state of Georgia and also licensed, I believe, he's going to come around. Are you currently employed by a funeral home in Tennessee? Yes, sir. Excuse me, what year were you licensed in Georgia? Uh, November the 28th or 9th of 1989, I believe it was. I know it was 1989. Is the reason the question is because of the score? That's strictly it. Art, is that? No, the art section, the funeral oh, section. Art. Oh, okay. The, the mm -hmm. score, and then we would need the balance of the documents that are need to be supplied to the office as well. We have either faxes or copies of everything with the exception of the certification. He has gone online and provided us with an online certification, but that's not the official certification. I would think my personal view is, you know, our statutes say 75, and it's uh, almost a little aggravating to me to see that at the time, and I guess mine was the same way. Um, well, no, yours was in 86, and mine was in 89, but uh, it's a little aggravating for me to see a testing agency put a point anything on it. It ought to be a flat. 74, 75, 80, 90, what have you. And I would, my personal opinion is I think 74.8 is just as good as 75. Uh, and he has been licensed in Georgia, so uh, I don't see an issue there. Um, you know, obviously, if the board chooses to go ahead and, and grant um, this license today, it would have to be subject upon the office receiving the documents that's lacking. Um, I'll make that motion. Second. Okay. We have a motion by Mr. Patterson and second by Mr. Highsmith that we approve the applications here um, su subject to uh, mm -hmm. the remaining documentation yeah. being filed with the office and Obviously, if you don't get that file, then it'll have to, you'll have to come back. <laughs> so, those, uh, those documents, uh, I've got a tracking number on those with the state of Georgia. They are to be overnighted 
from uh, the Secretary's office to Mr. Gribbles. Okay. I sent a tracking envelope with those. So as soon as they drop it back in, back in the GPS, Okay. I'll keep Mr. Gribble up there where they are. Okay. And Mr. Patterson, Mr. Highsmith, you know, this is with understanding that there's no issues with whatever the, the office receives to. So, um, any further questions or discussions about this matter? Question. Okay. Just point of clarification. Do we have a record of this having been done before? I mean, we're, we're just talking about this one National Board of Arts, just the art part of the National Board. Yes. Okay. Let's just point Mr. Taylor, to, yes, at, at the time that he took his test, the national board would average the scores. So if he averages the scores, he clearly passes. But their law says 75, so that's why we look at each individual one. But yes, I know, I personally know of one other instance where a, se a separate sitting board of the funeral directors did this before when it was 74 point, it was higher than 74.5, 74.5 or higher. I don't remember the exact score, but I do remember it being done before. Okay, anything else? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Congratulations. Get your, get your documents into the office and you'll be good to go. Okay. Thank you. Would you like to take care of the executive director's report? I'd be glad to, sir. I noticed that Mr. Barnes is. Okay. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. The dentist office said they couldn't tell me definitively without looking at it. So I would suggest I'll just kind of bite down and we'll just go ahead and finish today. Since we've got close to my house. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Sure, you feel comfortable with that decision? Right now, I do. Not that much, but right now, I do. You take some Advil. <laughs> okay. January, we don't know because sometimes meetings. The report, there's a report of license is administratively approved by the executive director pursuant to the board's authority for the period of November 13 through December 10, 2012. You'll see two new establishments there, and then you'll see a list of individual funeral directors and bombers and two who are issued a funeral director's license. Next item is there, there were no closed establishments be reported today that running funeral establishments closed since the vice board meeting. The disciplinary action report, this is a report of consent orders administratively accepted and approved by the executive director pursuant to the board authority for the period of November 13 through December 10, 2012. There are 14 consent orders which 
total eleven thousand dollars in civil penalties. Next item would be the open complaint report. And you will see that there are one hundred and two open complaints, six against funeral directors and or embalmers, and ninety-six against establishments. And lastly, I wanted to mention to you that I emailed to you yesterday a copy of a motion. Knowles versus the Tennessee Board of Funeral Directors and Bombers. It was in Davidson County Chantry Court, where that the order granting the defendant's motion, which would be the board's motion to dismiss the case, was acted upon. In that case, it was dismissed. That was a contentious. Counselor, can fill you in on the details. I just, it's been dismissed with with prejudice. So that basically means that that case has been dealt with, and it won't be coming coming back up again. All right. Chair will entertain a motion to accept the executive director's report. Motion to accept. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Hinkle to accept the executive director's report. Second by Mr. Starkey. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. All right, we're going to start with our legal report. Assistant General Counsel Benton McDonough. Thank you, Mr. President. The first case is complaint number 2012020411. The second case is 2012020412. On August 8, 2012, a field representative conducted a routine inspection of the respondent establishment. The funeral director's license of the manager of record had expired on June 30th of 2012. And from July 1st, 2012 through July 15th, 2012, at the time that they renewed the license, this individual was listed as the manager of record at a time when the establishment provided final arrangements for one decedent. Respondent number two responded for both respondents in this case. Respondent states that he has been a funeral director for 25 years and that he cannot recall a time when he had allowed his license to lapse. Respondent states that he never received his renewal information as he had moved to another residence since the previous renewal period. And respondent states that he spoke to personnel at the, excuse me, spoke to personnel at the board and paid his renewal fee plus the $200 late penalty fee and asked that the board take this late penalty fee into consideration when considering the complaint. We found no history of prior complaints and for respondent number one, we are recommending a letter of warning and for respondent number two, the consent order with a $250 civil penalty and authorization for a hearing. Move accept counsel's recommendation. I have a motion by Mr. Highsmith to accept counsel's recommendation, seconded by Ms. Seil. Any further questions, comments? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Number three is case 2012020431. Number four is case 2012020432. On August 23rd, 2012, a field representative conducted a routine inspection of the respondent establishment. The licenses of the funeral establishment manager of record had expired on June 30th, 2012 and were not renewed until July 30th, 2012. During this period of time, the establishment conducted final arrangements for two individuals and the funeral director whose license was also expired was listed as the manager of record during this time. Furthermore, it was found that the statement of funeral goods and services selected of one individual failed to list any itemization for the casket sold at a cost of $2,010 or the outer burial container sold at a cost of $1,010. Also, the lowest price casket on the casket price list was listed at $1,200, but the general price list lists the caskets beginning at $1,010. Respondent number four provided the response for both parties. The respondent received her renewal information in May regarding the licenses for the funeral director and the establishment. The respondent started having severe pain and sought medical assistance, causing her funeral director responsibilities to suffer. 
respondent was diagnosed with arthritis and forgot during that time that her licensing renewals were due at that time. We found a history of three closed complaints, and I've listed those on there under the history for you. And uh, for respondent number three, we are recommending a consent order with a $250 civil penalty and authorization for a hearing. And respondent number four, we're recommending a consent order with a $200 civil penalty and authorization for a hearing. Make a motion, we accept. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Starkey and a second by Mr. Hinkle to accept council's recommendation. Any further <clears throat> questions? Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Number five is case 2012020931. On uh, July 17, 2012, a field representative conducted a routine inspection of the respondent establishment. Uh, three statements of funeral goods and services selected showed a duplicate charge for basic services of funeral director and staff. On the uh, first two statements, the customers were charged $1,490 for basic services of funeral director and staff while also being charged $750 for a direct cremation, which had already included the, the charge for basic services of uh, funeral director and staff. The uh, third statement was uh, the customer was charged $1,490 for basic services of funeral director and staff, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, an additional uh, $750 under cash advances for crematory services. The uh, field representative could not obtain pricing for the crematory, but staff admitted that it uh, does not cost $750 uh, for those crematory services, meaning that either the respondent made duplicate charges for basic services or failed to properly provide a uh, proper disclosure regarding marking up the price for the cremation services. <coughs> Excuse me. The uh, respondent's sign referred to the funeral establishment by a name other than the exact name listed on the establishment application approved by the board. It should be noted, however, that the respondent's previous establishment had suffered fire damage the month or two prior prior to this inspection. Uh, respondent states that the families of the first two decedents originally chose direct cremation but then changed their minds and later added additional merchandise to their statement of funeral goods and services selected. As for the third individual, the same thing happened. However, the funeral director inadvertently placed the direct cremation price on the cash advance line, but the family later decided to upgrade services and merchandise after initially choosing a direct cremation. The funeral director, in all three cases, filled in the contract they had previously started and the staff now understands that the direct cremation is a minimum charge that requires basic services of funeral director and staff that cannot be charged twice. As for the sign, respondent states that the previous location was destroyed by fire and in haste they opened a, a temporary location with a sign containing that verbiage. A respondent took out the at that was in the sign and inserted the, the uh, new address instead. However, they admit that this is still in violation of the law, but believe it matches the spirit of the statute uh, that, that they are uh, alleged to have violated. Uh, we found a history of eight closed complaints uh, and two open, you know, see, eight closed complaints and two open complaints. And we're recommending a consent order with a $750 civil penalty and authorization for a hearing. May not come into play here, but it would be of interest to know what the direct cremation charge was to see if indeed this family was due a refund. Apparently, it's not an issue or it would be addressed. Mr. Housman, yes, sir. It's my understanding that they were marketed up as a cash advance. It's my understanding that they were that they were charging more for it. Than what the actual cost was. And reading there. That's my understanding. It may be incorrect, but that's my understanding.
Um, no. <laughs> you do not have a copy of the GPL in the file. Uh, I might. For my my uh, experience with this particular establishment, I mean, they all seem to have quite a bit of experience in, in the funeral business, so I don't think it was a matter of them not not knowing how to fill it out properly. Say one way or the other, so but it I, appears it, it may appear that way. But I, I would just say that they duplicated the charges, and that's what we found. In the, you know, whether or not um, you know they they were misleading their customer. You know, I, I can't say that for sure. Their direct cremation with an alternative container provided the purchaser seven hundred dollars, and a direct cremation with a loop, complete proof of corrugated container provided the funeral home seven hundred. But we're not going, to, not going to be able to know what the crematory actually charges the funeral home to do the cremation itself. I guess what I'm saying is they would, it would appear to me that they would family be due a $1,490 refund because technically they can only charge $750 for a direct cremation. That's what's on their general price list. The they said they added some services and, and merchandise, but we don't know what they added. Then they should have charged for whatever their charge was from a mall service instead of adding basic services. Well, of course, it depends on how you're looking at that. I mean, if they're doing this there one basic services and then seven fifty on the cash advance item, that could still be two separate things. There, you know, the fee for their basic services should be included in their fee for direct cremation. Mm -hmm. So if they got on their GPL that the direct cremation is seven hundred and fifty dollars, they're charging these families twenty two hundred and forty dollars. And they owe these families fourteen hundred and ninety dollars back until they change the general price list to reflect the twenty four. And they charge twenty two forty if they want to, but they just gotta be consistent with what their general price list and what they're charging would appear to me. Well, it says it appeared that the cremation did not take place. See the respondent statement under number one. It's immaterial what the statement 
penal goods and services say is what's in question is what the uh, cremation charges are. The material at this point under the first response is to what the additional merchandise charges are. They could have, if they if they decided to have more services and merchandise, they could have charged their basic services and only charged the family for the crematory fee charged by the crematory and not charge the <coughs> cremation fee. There's a couple of different ways they could have done it, but the way that they did it, they double charged. So they they owe they owe some amount. It's just how, how you how you how you figure it. They overcharge. We just don't know how to figure it out. We we can assess the uh, civil penalty, but I mean we we don't have any authority right. to make them uh, right. refund the money. We can. Uh, I'm always open and willing to. So we cannot assess the civil penalty and direct them to refund these three families fourteen hundred ninety dollars. We we don't have the authority to make them repay it, but we, you know, I'm always open to adding that into the consent order though, and making sure that they do pay it back. I've I've never actually had a consent order where where we recommended that they uh, refund the money and they didn't actually do it. So. Um, you know, I would be willing to add that in there. If, Does the board have the authority to recommend that? You can all, you can recommend it. But it can't be a part of the order. No, you, you can to. you can put it in the in the order. You can put it in there that the, the board believes that it's appropriate to refund you know X number of dollars to to the customers. So that that's what we've done before. They they I've never had a situation where they didn't refund the money. I would move that a consent order be issued with the $750 civil penalty and recommendation that the establishment refund $1,490 to the three customers in question and authorization for here. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Highsmith to accept council's recommendation with the add-on. Is that $1,450 to each individual? Customer just to make sure that the three fourteen fourteen hundred ninety dollars to each of the three customers in question. Okay, okay. you got you got that. I do. All right, everybody clear on what, what we're doing. We had a I motion. I disagree with it, but I, so I won't no. Okay, <laughs> I, the way it is to me, somebody's written it down wrong because they got seven fifty. And you can put charge whatever you want to for direct cremation, but it's under cash advances. Maybe they're crematory charge. I mean, my crematory charge is twenty to four hundred and something dollars. If you add seven fifty to fourteen ninety, it's twenty two forty. It's still twenty two forty. But you know, I'm not exactly sure. Somebody might have written something down, but by the fact that they put it over seven fifty, to me that's not necessarily meaning that might be just what they're charging for the crematory charge. In other words, but, but the employee stated that that is not what the crematory fee is. The staff admitted it does not cost seven hundred fifty dollars. Hmm. Well, it doesn't cost, but you don't have to use. You don't have to charge. The crematory fee is a cash advance item if you include it in your, you know. I get what I'm saying. In other words, you treat the crematory like Wilbur Ball. But if a guy picks up this guy's general price list and it says direct cremation $750, and he says that's what I want, and he comes in, it costs him $2,240, there's something wrong with that. 
Do you have a copy of the journal where I was living? Yes. yes, we do. Could I look at it? Uh, you don't, you have, don't it. have it. Probably, we have it, but we Okay. But you don't have it. You don't have I've, it. You know, before I make a judgment like that, I want to see the general price and just see what it says. Council and Mr. Gribble have looked at that. It's, it's clear on the general price list that they've charged $1,490 for basic services in addition to the $750 cremation fee, $388 for use of facilities for the memorial service, $179, I think it was, for the register book, and maybe some other third party expenses. If you look at the statement of general goods and services, it's, uh, it's very, very clear that those are two distinct separate items. So I, I can't see where you should give them $1,490 back to all three of these families because to me that's part of their basic services. You know, if they're putting it over in their the crematory fee in their cash advance items, I could charge $1,000 for a crematory fee if I want to. I won't, but I could. It's what they charge He said it's all separated on their general price list what they're charging for. But you don't do you have do you have a copy of the statement of goods? That's what we're looking for. Oh, okay. So they break it down and that's what they're showing. Yes, sir. And on their general price list, the general price list is saying that their direct cremation is seven hundred and fifty dollars. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So they charge the basic the fourteen ninety and the seven fifty and the three hundred something oral service if it's a direct cremation. It's the same on all three of them. Same. That wouldn't often. I'm just that's really not that doesn't matter because they as I said they charge you they want to but. When we say direct cremation, that represents what that is. Right. And that's, that's what I understand. In other words, on their general price list, it's not correct. They need to go back and fix their general price list more than likely to reflect the basic services uh, with the direct cremation. So for them to, from what I'm understanding, for, for them to be correct, their uh, charges for a direct cremation should probably be 20, 22 to 40. Well, 22 to 40. Well, they can charge whatever they want to for direct cremation. Their basic services fee has to be in there, but it can be a commensurate amount of, of what their services are. It just appears to me like they're wanting to cheapskate their direct cremation charge at 750 and then when anybody else does anything else, then they want to tack on their basic services fee, in which you know you can't you can't double you can't double charge for your basic services. Now there's two, you know there's a couple of different formulas they could use for pricing, and that's the only issue that that I have with it is they've overcharged, but I don't know that I can say definitely that they've overcharged the 1495 because um, because they could have. They could have charged the fourteen ninety five for their basic services. They could have charged the memorial service and all the other items, and then they could have just did the crematory fee, just what they pay the crematory, whatever it is, and that would have been all right. But you can't say basic services plus direct cremation. You can't do. You can't. You can't have it both ways. I don't. I don't think we should impose. They should. I still have a problem with this. Give fourteen hundred or suggesting to give fourteen. I believe that's part of that cremation fee. Right or wrong, I would say I would recommend them look at their general price list and make that clear. But I don't know. It's, to me, it sounds like a legitimate charge based on what I know most people charge for cremation. And it might be, but like Clark says, they're trying to. Make it look like well, we don't charge seven fifty for direct cremation. Well, if you want a memorial service, then we're going to add fourteen. Mm. Yeah, 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 which is legitimate, probably. But they just—if they intended on doing that, they just didn't put it down right. Yeah. Um, 
they they've messed they just don't know how to fill out their contract. So right. Yeah. Um, well, the fact that they have done it three times, that was another thing that cued me in. This is a normal thing they do. Yeah. If they did it one time, then I'd say maybe they goofed. They've done it all three times, so no, this is pattern. part of their charges. It's a pattern for them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, was, it was all but the same funeral director. It's, and it, the field rep says in a random sampling of their files, he found where this occurred three times, all but the same funeral He's the one that has the highest average. <laughs> okay, so we're going to, um, are we going to, I think I've got a, to have a motion by Mr. Highsmith, and I have a second by Ms. Sal, um, and we're still including the part about giving the money back. Recommending. Okay, recommending. That part's well, not, we that part's not binding, so. That, that's where we stand right now. That was the okay. That was the okay. Latest offer. All right. Any more questions, comments? All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Let the record reflect. We got one no, Mr. Stark. Number six is case two zero one two zero two zero nine seven one on July twenty third, two thousand twelve. Field representative conducted a routine inspection. Uh, one file shows that uh, there were three duplicate charges. Uh, one person was charged $1,495 for basic services of funeral director and staff, $965 for direct cremation, along with other services which indicate a uh, direct cremation did not take place. The uh, general price list states that a direct cremation includes transfer of remains to funeral home. However, the customer was charged $190 for transfer of remains. And the uh, Norwood Oak Rental Casket is listed at $995, and the Statement of Funeral Goods and Services Selected lists a $150 charge for alternative container. However, the casket price list uh, lists the Norwood Oak for $995 and states that this charge includes a cremation insert, which serves as an alternative container. In response, respondent admits that uh, these final arrangements gave them trouble as it included a rental casket, open casket viewing, and cremation. The, uh, Family did not live in town and seemed to be in a rush during the uh, arrangement meeting. The respondent accidentally charged the family twice for the cremation charge and transfer of the decedent, which was already included in the basic services of funeral, of, uh, funeral director uh, and the funeral director and staff.
uh, funeral services were held on Friday, September 21st, 2012, and the burial was scheduled for Tuesday, September 25th, 2012. The hole in the left shoulder was uh, wrapped in cotton and sealed with surgical tape very firmly. The trip to the cemetery was 52 miles long, and the pressure from the wrapping of the surgical tape was so immense that it caused the skin to burst and fluid to escape from the left arm. The respondent states that in the future they will do a better job of inspecting the bodies and properly wrapping the bodies. Uh, we found two closed complaints and three open complaints and uh, we're recommending a consent order with a $1,000 civil penalty and authorization for a hearing. Why so much? Uh, because there, there was a, uh, we thought there was a significant amount of bodily fluid and that they should have. <coughs> Why doesn't the cemetery require a uh, seal casket? Well, I, I mean, I can't they don't, speak for they them. They don't even require a bottle, so, you know, I have a problem here. <laughs> I tell you what, I can sit with my family, and they're going to come to us and dig over it. And if it's written out of the bottle, I guess it's cemetery guy filed a complaint and not the family. Well, it's not the cemetery guy, it's the uh, commissioner. Of yeah, the well, family. the cemetery has said something else. Was this... He wasn't there, was he? The paper state burial cemetery. Was the burial occurred? I didn't get a, a specific location of where it was. I just They just said it was a uh, veterans cemetery. Well, Bob, if that cemetery, the family's not allowed to go. But this, but but the the committal service is held in a in a rotunda of sorts, and probably while the casket was in the committal building, that's where the the cemetery uh, personnel saw that the casket was leaking. Uh, otherwise, it wouldn't would make any difference. But they were. They were the, I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm, I'm sure they were there in in the uh, in the committal building and that's more that they noticed this. Oh, no, I don't know. My point was that's why I thought maybe that person is the reason that person is the one that filed the complaint because they were the one they were there to see it happen. The the complaint is being filed by the commissioner of the department. I believe the Department of Veterans Affairs. Yes. And do we know, was he alerted by the cemetery attendant that witnessed this, or was he alerted by the family? Uh, I think it was by the cemetery. Um, it's a she. It, it wasn't by the family. say they say he wasn't there he files a complaint you know maybe it was as bad maybe it was just you know it sounds like it's bad bad and I'm not sure how bad bad it was I well the, I think there's you know I think a thousand dollars is way too steep for this case if the person has seen it been the family 
that's different, but, you know, somebody, cemetery, you know, for all we know, he don't even like the funeral home because of something, you know, I, I mean, it's like a disgruntled employee. Well, the, the funeral establishment didn't deny any of the, yeah. any of the events that they're alleging, so. Do we know? That, I think that also. Do we know whether or not the family is aware of it? Uh, I'm not aware that, that they're aware of it. Uh, they, they didn't mention if they had informed the family of that or if the family saw anything or anything of that nature. It, it's strictly a complaint that was filed by the commissioner that the information came from the director of the cemetery. I can't imagine, um, I can't imagine um, her going to the trouble of filing this complaint if she didn't have sufficient reason to. Um, I, I don't think it would have gotten that high up the chain if she hadn't had sufficient reason to file a complaint. In the state government, that would be the normal procedure. The director would probably not give you a complaint. If something I wanted to complain about, I'd have to pass it on up. The assistant commissioner, assistant commissioner, deputy commissioner, deputy commissioner, commissioner. So it's a very logical about the commissioner would want to actually file a complaint with us instead of the cemetery director. But do you think that each, when it goes up the chain, if if they didn't think there was sufficient evidence, they wouldn't have allowed it to have been filed? Right, right. Okay. And did you take in consideration their track record when you? Yeah, uh, we, we take all of that into consideration. Because they've had, you know, if you look at them, they've had uh, an in individual embalming without a license, and you know there's several other things that just you know makes you wonder about how hard they tried. Okay, is that where the the civil penalty? That's what seemed high. I don't have a problem with that seemed high, but because of other things, is that kind of where that high civil penalty came from? Yeah, and uh, uh, Mr. Oh, Gribble okay. wanted to point that, out that's the fact open. that okay. yeah, that one's still open. Hasn't okay, been, I see. Hasn't been presented yet. So. Oh, they're all <laughs> well. Some of them's open. Yeah. yeah the last one's closed, but the first. Yeah, okay. Well, some of them are still, I mean, okay. all except for that one of them presented. Okay, okay. I stand corrected. So we'll be hearing, we'll be hearing more, looks like, or somebody will. Motion to accept council's recommendation. Second. We have a motion by Ms. Taylor to accept council's recommendation. Second by Mr. Starkey. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Number eight is case 2012021621. On uh, November 1st, 2010, the respondent filed a letter of closure of their uh, funeral establishment. In March 2012, the respondent filed a monthly report of funeral directors with the county health department. A field representative went to the establishment and found the wife of the owner. She stated that the funeral establishment was still closed, but that her husband was working at improving the building so that he could operate it in the future. Uh, the field representative asked about the website and Facebook pages still in operation and uh, the owner's wife stated that she was not aware of those pages. Uh, she further stated that they filed the monthly report, monthly report with the health department because they believed that they were obligate, excuse me, obligated to do so. Uh, in response, respondent states that he has operated his establishment properly and met all of the requirements during the time of actual operation of the business prior to the closure in 2010. As for the website, respondent states that this was a demo site and he has, had not given permission to put the website or Facebook page to use. Uh, respondent states that his business is not currently operating, but he intends to reopen it in the future. Uh, furthermore, the county health department continued to contact the respondent, so the respondent believed they should provide the monthly, monthly report regardless of their uh, closure of the business. We found uh, the history of one prior complaint, which is now closed, and we're recommending a letter of warning in this case. Motion to accept council's recommendations. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Hinkle to accept council's recommendations. Second by Mr. Patterson. Any further discussion? I have a question. Uh, 
question. That yes, ma'am. Over my head. Okay. What are they reporting? No fuel. <laughs> yeah. It was zero. Is okay. that what the letter of warning will address? Just tell them to quit sending in a report. Uh, I think it, it's it's that, but also the uh, website and Facebook page okay. to make sure okay. that they're not. Okay. So, uh, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Number nine is case 20120022371. The uh, complainant alleges that the respondent offered a pre-need discount when they offered special pricing for at-need and pre-need traditional funeral services. The uh, respondent appears to be offering the same price for at-need and pre-need. However, in reviewing the advertisement and complaint sent in by the complainant, it was discovered that the respondent fail to provide an itemized charge for each item. In response, the respondent states that the price advertised for a traditional funeral service at $3,250 includes basic professional services of funeral director and staff, embalming, dressing, casketing, cosmetology, funeral service, visitation, removal from place of death, uh, hearse to cemetery, flower van, cemetery equipment, online obituary, and dove release in a 20 gauge Batesville non protective star silver or star copper tone for $745, which equals an at need or pre need total of $3,995, which is listed on the general price list. Uh, we found a history of three closed complaints and uh, one of those, uh, excuse me, a fourth complaint that was dismissed. And we're recommending a consent order with a $250 civil penalty and authorization for a hearing. That has to do because their advertisement was not itemized. That's correct. Everything else seems to be in place, does it not? Uh, it does, yes, sir. We move to accept council's recommendation. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Highsmith and a second by Mr. Hinkle to accept council's recommendation. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Number 10 is case 2012023. 081. The uh, complainant's brother passed away in Detroit, Michigan in uh, August of 2012. The uh, body was embalmed at a funeral establishment in Detroit and then transported to the respondent's funeral establishment. The family viewed the body in Detroit prior to the transport and they were very pleased with the condition of the body at that time. However, when the family and friends conducted a viewing following the funeral services in Tennessee, the complainant was horrified by the condition of the body. The complainant states that the decedent's arm was very flimsy and the decedent appeared much darker during the second viewing on August 25th as compared to the initial viewing in Detroit on Wednesday, August 22nd. The flowers on the casket were wilted and the body had an odor as the family walked up to the casket which was not present at the previous viewing. The uh, respondent informed the complainant that the Detroit funeral establishment failed to properly embalm and preserve the body. In response, the respondent believes that the allegations of neglect are unfounded in this case. Uh, respondent received the decedent's body from the Detroit funeral home uh, funeral establishment via air shipment. The complainant claims that the decedent looked totally different and had an odor about him. Respondent states that any issue with the decedent's appearance should be filed with the Detroit funeral establishment that provided the embalming services. The family viewed the remains as they lay in repose on Friday, August 24, 2012, and never complained about the condition of the body. The family never complained until they were transported back to the church following the burial by the respondent's staff. One employee expressed regret that the family was not pleased with the decedent's appearance, but stated that the respondent uh, did not preserve the remains and were not responsible for the appearance. The employee also made the family aware that the decedent had been deceased for almost two weeks prior to the funeral, and that could have an impact on the condition of the body. The family never complained about wilted flowers until after they had returned to Detroit. We found uh, no history of prior complaints, and we're recommending to dismiss this case. Motion to accept council recommendations. Sir. I have a motion by Mr. Hinkle and a second by Mr. Patterson. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Number 11 is case 2012023231. 
On July 19, 2012, a field representative conducted a routine inspection of the respondent establishment. The establishment license for the respondent had expired on April 30, 2012 and was not renewed until May 21, 2012. During this period of time, the establishment conducted no funerals or funeral arrangements. The uh, respondent has also conducted four funerals during the entire 2012 calendar year as of August 1, 2012. In response, the respondent apologizes and states that they wrote down the wrong date on their calendar regarding the renewal of their establishment license. Uh, we found one prior complaint that is now closed, and we're recommending a letter of warning in this case. Motion to dis dismiss. Step. Motion to accept counsel's recommendation. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was. Is a letter of warning. Yes. You, you're accepting the, the letter of warning. Yes. Okay. All right. We have a motion by Ms. Taylor to accept counsel's recommendation, a letter of warning. Second by Mr. Hinkle. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Number 12 is case 201202325151. On August 8, 2012, the field representative conducted a routine inspection of the respondent establishment. The respondent's establishment license expired on June 30, 2012 and was not renewed until July 10, 2012. During this period of time, the respondent conducted two funeral services. The respondent states that they had a difficult time transitioning the business following the death of their relative. The respondent has delegated licensing renewal to the employee over accounts payable. The respondent's manager states that he was made aware of the pending renewal and takes full responsibility for the late renewal. The respondent states that they were overwhelmed with the loss of family members and added family responsibilities, causing them to forget about the renewal. We found a history of two closed complaints. And we're recommending a consent order with a $250 civil penalty and authorization for a hearing. Make a motion. We accept counsel's recommendation. We have a motion by Mr. Starkey to accept counsel's recommendation. Second. Second by Mr. Hinkle. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Number 13 is case 201202-3271. On uh, August 10, 2012, a field representative conducted a routine inspection of the respondent establishment. The uh, establishment license expired on June 30, 2012 and was not renewed until July 13, 2012. During this period of time, the establishment conducted five funeral services. Respondent states that they have addressed the issue regarding an invalid license and have placed the event on their calendar for each each year. We found a history of two prior complaints. Um, one of those is now closed and one of those was previously dismissed. And uh, we're recommending a consent order with a $500 civil penalty and authorization for a hearing. Motion to accept council's recommendation. We have a motion by Ms. Taylor to accept counsel's recommendation. Second. Second by Mr. Hinkle. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Number 14 is case 201202-3281. On August 29, 2012, a field representative conducted a routine inspection of the respondent establishment. The establishment license expired on June 30th, 2012 and was not renewed until July 9th, 2012. During this period of time, the respondent conducted three funeral services. The uh, respondent manager was under the impression that the renewal application of the establishment's operating license had been forwarded to the board with appropriate payment. As it turned out, this did not take place and the respondent has put methods in place to address the issue in the future. As you can see, we found a history of seven closed complaints and we're recommending a consent order with a $300 civil penalty and authorization for a hearing. Motion to accept counsel's recommendation. We have a motion by Mr. Hinkle to accept counsel's recommendation. Second. Second by Mr. Highsmith. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Uh, Opposed? Motion carried. 
Number 15 is case 2012023431. The complainant provided copies of newspaper advertisements for cremation starting at $892. At the base of the advertisement, the respondent provides a list of items, services, items and services included in the plan, but provides no itemized list. A listing of the cost. The complainant states that they have received letters from the board stating that they should cease similar advertisements. In response, the respondent is not aware of any violation in their advertisement and respondent states that this is not a package and the details are explained along with the price being included on the general price list since April 9, 2010. We found a history of one open complaint and uh, nine closed complaints and we're recommending a consent order with a $250 civil penalty and authorization for a hearing. <clears throat> Doesn't the law state that you have to itemize those things if you... You have to itemize the, the, uh, the prices, the That's prices what I'm for saying. the services. It says that, doesn't it, that you're supposed to yes. have everything broke down but the price of it. Each individual item and service and yeah. the price for it. That's what I thought. That, yeah. As many times as they've been been before us before and letters of warning, letters of caution, I'd have been in favor of more than that. Evidently, they didn't heed, heed the warning. first time from the board. Did it have any penalty with it? Um, it says 250. If that's the first one in the history up there. That was, well, that was the first one. Yeah. Illegal advertising. And then the last... And there's another the, misleading it. The last, the last three have been letters of warning, so... And it's all on advertising. but that's just me. <laughs> Motion uh, to amend the council's recommendation of $250 to $500 civil penalty and authorization for a hearing. Thank you. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Hinkle to increase the civil penalty to $500 and authorization for a hearing. <coughs> I have a second by Mr. Highsmith. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. And I believe that concludes your report. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. I believe all will be proud and we will That's right. <laughs> <My last. laughs> I think you tell them that when you talk. <laughs> Bless you. We have a little housekeeping to do before we go today. Um, the chair will entertain a nominations for president of the board for the year 2013. I make a nomination. We elect Tony Highsmith. Second. All right. We have a, a motion by Mr. Starkey and a second by Mr. Hinkle and, and Ms. Taylor. Close the nomination. Thank you. <laughs> Did he be elected by acclamation? <laughs> All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Now we need to elect a or open the floor for nominations for vice president next year. Mr. President, I recommend Debbie T. Patterson as vice president. Next year. Second it. <laughs> All right. We have Mr. Hinkle making motion for Mr. Patterson to be vice president in multiple seconds. Miss uh, Taylor and Mr. Starkey. Since I made the motion, somebody else will have to call for us to see some nominations. <laughs> <laughs> so moved. So moved. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Now then, who now gets the last... the, who's got the fax machine? <laughs> yeah. Who made the, the motion? Last... Uh, Mr. Hinkle. Hinkle but after the two seconds, Mr. Hinkle. Uh, 
And then who made the motion to for acclamation? Miss Sowers. Who second that? Miss Taylor. Mr. <laughs> we need to uh, appoint a continuing education liaison for 2013, and that individual is responsible for um, the, the board office will send the um, applications for those entities desiring to have continuing education programs and they'll they'll be faxed to whomever gets this job and you'll have to fax them back and, uh, I don't know how many hundred I don't know how many hundred there are in a year's time but anyway. so Mr. President if it pleases the board I would be willing to serve in that position all right we have Mr. um Start to say Mr. Hinkle. We have Mr. Highsmith volunteering for that position like I did last year. So I moved to accept his volunteering. Second. All right. Okay. I agree with the board member. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All in favor of, of continuing education liaison slash President Tony Highsmith. Aye. 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 Opposed. All right. Motion carried. And uh, I know that we're going we're going to be back uh, Monday for to conclude our uh, our formal hearing but I guess we'll since it's not a regular meet we'll go ahead and, and say our goodbyes and then we won't have to do it we won't have to do it uh, next week so uh, I'm gonna let Mr. Hinkle if you want to make some remarks before we uh, before we go Oh, you always want to top me, don't you? <laughs> Robert, I want to thank you and your staff. It's been an enjoyable four years. And I want to thank this committee and three years of other committees for putting up with my loud mouth and my mean <laughs> jokes. <laughs> but I can tell you one thing, and then I'm going to turn it over to Clark. The Lord opens doors for you. Nobody ever thought a little old guy from East Tennessee that was a building inspector. And my some of my friends cannot understand it this day. How did he end up on the funeral board? Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Mr. Hinkle. And I know uh, um, Robert has told me that many times. He wondered how you ever in my in my uh, in my recent memory of the board I don't uh, you know I don't take anything away from anybody else but I don't recall a consumer member ever um, being as devoted to the board as Mr. Hinkle has he has uh, he has been faithful I don't think he's missed a meeting in the four years that, that uh, we have served together and uh, he has uh, he is he's definitely he's tried his best and he's done a good job and, and we're gonna miss him and uh, you know, since since we were uh, appointed by Governor Bredesen four years ago, we've said goodbye to uh, Mr. Murphy and uh, Mr. Hamilton and uh, Ms. Horner, Ms. Bridges, and Mr. Williams, and and uh, we miss miss them all, and yeah. and we we count them as our friends, and and in the four years that that I've been here, um, it was indeed an honor uh, for me to be appointed, and. Um, I have gained a lot of respect for the other members of this board, and uh, and hold them in high esteem. Made made good good friends, I believe, and uh, and I appreciate uh, everybody that's on the board now, and what you're trying to do. We appreciate our the entire office staff. Uh, appreciate Mr. Gribble's uh, work. Um, appreciate what Mr. Chick has done and what Mr. McDonough has done um, the years that I've been here and and, uh, and and I do want to thank they're not here but do want to thank our field representatives um, they uh, they have a they have a thankless job and uh, they they really they try their best you know the board is not uh, is not perfect I don't think anything a, a human has got anything to do with it ever be perfect 
we try our best. Um, a lot of people may not see it that way, but we, uh, this board tries its best to do what's right, and what's in the interest of the consumer, and, and what will hopefully um, create a higher standard of practice in funeral service. And, and uh, I'm, I'm kind of like Miss Bridges now. I'm going to. I'm going to miss this coming down here every month. Well, guess what? You get to come back <laughs> but, next month. But, I, but I'll get to come back next Monday. <laughs> and uh, I just, I appreciate all of you and appreciate the work that the office does. Well, they're like uh, Dennis Murphy. They told me, he said, I would be up there every month and support you know us. I've seen them twice. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they wasn't up here then and they didn't know where they were. <laughs> Mr. President, the, uh, I think I could probably speak on behalf of the board. I hope the board would allow me to do that. If not, consider these my personal remarks. And I'd like to congratulate uh, you and Mr. Hinkle both uh, for your four years of service to the board. You have both served with integrity. You have both served with the knowledge of the rules and the regulations of the Board of Field Directors and Bomber. Uh, it's been an honor to have served with both of you. Both we asked by this board. Thank you. Well, if there's nothing else, we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to recess. Motion to recess until December the 17th at 10 a.m. That's right. Okay. Motion to recess. Can we uh, have a suggestion that we talked about earlier? Try to have the vice president or the former president, whatever, you know, within the first three months, say, of the year, say, they said one year it was in August before, but let's try to get it in, you know, February, March, something like that. So it's not too far after they've left. And we don't forget those. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Let me ask you this, Mr. Turkey. Would it be all right to wait till March or April because of the weather sometimes? Oh, yeah, that's, that's fine. Sometimes you're yeah. January and February, right. yeah. especially. Saying, I think it was March or April last yeah. year when we had it, or this year. I think he was in favor of the same menu, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's coming. <laughs> I've already told him that. <laughs> he said, the, now Clark told me that year before last, I wasn't there, but the pecan pie was bourbon pecan, and it was a little better than this year, which was just pecan. So. <laughs> well, if anybody would know. <laughs> well, I got permission from Tony and Robert before I took a bite of it. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Okay. Motion to recess until Monday at 10 o'clock. Motion to recess until Monday. Okay. We have a second. Second. Second uh, by uh, motion by Mr. Hinkle, second by Ms. Taylor. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed. All right, motion carried. We'll see everybody back Monday.